Uh, today, guys, we're talking about drugs and drug delivery, and specifically, or quite specifically, how that relates to solubility of a drug, um, and how yeah the effect that has on absorption, and the way we we administer drugs in general. So, first off, we need to talk about we're going to use the term drug from now on, but generally term medication. So, a, a drug is considered to be a chemical substance that changes the physiology of the human body. So something happens to your physiology, there's a change that is related directly to the medicine that's um, administered. For lots of reasons, we use them, uh, prevention of disease, diagnosis of disease and treatment, you know, um, and there are all sorts of types. There are analgesics, which are a pain medication, antihistamines to reduce uh, inflammation, antibiotics, uh, to kill bacteria, HRT, um, hormone replacement therapy, that's going to be quite a big deal later on, and vaccines. And remember, this is a long one today, so, you know, hang in there. All right, so they need to get to, the, the drug itself, the medication needs to get where, to where it's active, the active site. Um, and the active ingredient is what needs to get there. Uh, there are several methods of delivery we talk about. There's oral, uh, that's the last one we'll focus on, that's the main one, really. There's also intravenous, that's the IV, you've seen that before, probably had that before, there's topically, um, dermal patches, subdermal implants. Now, first we'll talk about intravenous. It's intravenous, not intravenous. Uh, and it works essentially by inserting a catheter into the vein directly. Uh, the catheter is the plastic tube, which is around the needle when it goes in, then they pull the needle out, leaves the catheter in there. And you'll see the different layers of skin. So it's beneath the, the dermis and the epidermis. Um, now, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's a super fast way of getting medicine in. And to be honest, this is how if you are having a serious uh, bacterial infection, this is how they will inject the antibiotics into the, into the body. There's topical, okay, so these are creams and ointments that are applied to the skin. Um, you, you can have either an alcohol or a water solvent, and they're absorbed through the skin, uh, if it's not treating the skin directly, they're absorbed through the skin, similar to dermal patches. Now, they are often for skin conditions or, as Zoidberg is showing us right here, for burns. Now, our creams are water-based and ointments are oil-based. That's something worth knowing and remembering. Now, dermal patches. Okay, so if we see, have a look at this device here, uh, we can see basically how this is going to work. So they bypass the digestive system and deliver drugs directly to the bloodstream through the skin. Now, there are several advantages. They're slow and steady. So they provide a slow and steady supply directly to the bloodstream. It's not a, a big hit all at once and then nothing. The disadvantage, not many molecules can pass directly through the skin to the bloodstream. Uh, these tend to work for things like uh, nicotine patches, some hormone replacement, but not many. Um, but yeah, nicotine patches where you see, and you'll see you've got the the plastic backing, uh, an area where the drug is kept, a drug release membrane that slows it from just sitting on the skin the whole time, and then where the glue is. All right, subdermal implants. Now, these are implanted beneath the skin, and we have several advantages. So they're implanted beneath the skin, as you can see here. So this is a sub subcutaneous injection. Um, and, and intramuscular, so one is into the skin levels, one is into the, that's there, one's into the muscles, one, intravenous, that's what we talked about with the IV, transdermal, which in this case is the dermal patches, and the implant, and you can see it's beneath the derm, or in the dermis, at the bottom of the dermis, right there. Uh, first, also, you have a, usually a silicon rod, silicon because it doesn't react with us, and this extra diol, that's, that's just a hormone in particular, and that's what the hormone is. Now, they're generally quite useful for hormone replacement therapies, 
um, they're slow release, so you, you know the hormone can be in there for a long time, and it won't be it won't be a peaky release. It's sort of you know peaky as in it goes and then nothing. It's more of a slow build. Um, they're able to be administered larger molecules so they don't have to go through the skin, so they're already there right in the bloodstream. You can see down here it's, it's right next to all of the veins, etc. There are disadvantages. Uh, it's got to be inserted beneath the skin. It's invasive. Uh, uh, and that's the main one, to be honest. Uh, it's useful for HRT, so hormone reflective therapy, and chronic conditions. There are pain medications uh, done this way. And they release a constant amount of pain medication. Oral drugs. First, problems with giving drugs orally. So, it might not make it into the bloodstream. Why? If it's not able to pass through the intestinal wall because of the particular molecule, if it is digested by the stomach, now digested means broken down, so if it's broken down by the stomach, it won't be useful, the active ingredient. And there's the first pass effect, which means it, is made, it can be made inactive by enzymes as it passes by the liver. Okay? The first place it has to stop once it goes through the intestinal wall is the liver. And the liver is pretty good at breaking these things down. The major disadvantage, though, is that the release is peaky. As we said, you get a massive dose and then nothing after. There are modifications for that, but to help for that, we'll see that in a minute. Now, factors affecting these problems. Solubility in water, uh, ability to stand the low pH of the stomach. If it breaks apart, for status, if it's not, if it's not soluble in water, it won't go. It just won't mix in with the digestive system. The ability to stand the low pH of the stomach. So if the acidic environment of the stomach breaks it down, it's not going to work. Uh, the ability to stand the effects of enzymes in the digestive system. So enzymes, that's what they do. They they speed reactions up to help break it down. Um, and the alkaline environment, the duodenum. So if it can't stand either any of those, it might not work orally. Again, there are workarounds that with different types of medication. Uh, so there's enteric coatings, which means it will go straight through the digestive, uh, sorry, straight through the stomach into the duodenum. Low pH won't be an issue there. Now, if a drug is stable enough to survive the digestive system, the solubility affects the rate of absorption. In other words, if something is highly soluble, it will absorb into the body at a high rate. So, types of oral drugs. Liquids. Pretty simple. Uh, liquids and suspension, mixtures in general, release the drug into the stomach. So, antacids, they work well in the stomach. Tablets. This is the most common for scientific and economic reasons. They're easy and cost effective for both the people making them and for the people taking them. They contain the active ingredient, inert fillers, lubricants, possibly colouring and flavourings. Now, they dissolve rapidly in the stomach, particularly the aid of disintegrants. Now, disintegrants are chemicals which dissolve. They, you make the tablet out of those and they'll disintegrate, such as cellulose, lactose, starch. Um, now, it breaks down. The tablet is a solid, uh, sorry, in the stomach. Uh, in the powder and granules in the stomach. Now they'll dissolve in the, either the stomach or the small intestine. That's the S and the SI. So basically they're absorbed in either the stomach or the small intestine. So then we have enteric coated tablets. They remain intact through the stomach and into the duodenum or the small intestine. Uh, the alkaline environment is what breaks them down and then they are absorbed in the bloodstream. Now they're usually coated with cellulose, acetate, Phthalate, sure, whatever. Cellulose, acetate, phthalate. Now, this requires a pH of above 5.8, otherwise it won't break down. It's resistant to it below that. Capsules, and so these have the active drug is you know, contained in a hard or soft gelatin coating. Uh, it can be a soft, solid liquid or gel for the active drug, and it may be mixed with an inert filler, which makes sense. I mean, you, you, know, you mix it up with a few more things to fill it out. They release the drug more slowly than a conventional tablet will. All right. For those of you who wish to understand this better, if you want to maybe go from, say, a band 5 to a band 6 type knowledge, there are 
you, you should summarize the functions of the other types of slow release capsules. Okay, there's the osmotic pump, diffusion control, dissolution control, and immersion control. All right, thanks for paying attention. Stay red, and we'll see you in class.